So very good evening, uh, you all, uh, dear brothers in Christ. We thank our uh, Lord God Almighty for giving us a wonderful opportunity to discuss uh, yet uh, about His wonderful words of life. So today is a very important topic. Uh, uh, we are going to study about uh, faith. So uh, you see in the Bible, the Bible speaks about faith, and everybody in this world has uh, faith. So let it be any religion or uh, any man in this world he is having uh, a faith. If you take uh, the example of uh, Muslims, you see, they also have uh, faith. They have faith that, uh, you see, they should uh, do namaz and prayer uh, at least uh, twice a day. So that is their uh, faith. So similarly, uh, every uh, people in this world have their own faith. So therefore, uh, you, uh, you see, uh, if you take other religion, uh, those people also have faith. They believe that uh, they have, uh, you see, uh, Ashta Devate, that is uh, multiple uh, crores and crores of God in a animal. So that is their faith. And they believe that uh, if they drink uh, the urine of uh, that uh, particular animal, they will be cleansed of all their, uh, you see, <laughs> diseases and all their... Uh, uh, unholiness uh, and they'll become uh, pure. That is their faith. So, Bible also speaks about faith. Okay. Now, what is the faith on the Bible is called as per the Bible. So, let us read book of Jude verse uh, 20. Book of Jude verse Jude verse uh, 20. Can somebody read? Now, faith is the substance of things hoped for. But he, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Good. So, you see, the faith on the Bible is called as the most holy faith. So, there is a, a faith in the Bible. What is the definition of faith in the Bible? You see, uh, the Bible says in Hebrews 11 1, that uh, faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of the things uh, that are not seen. The things which we don't see, you see, yet we believe that uh, those things uh, exist. Like, for example, the beautiful creation of this uh, entire universe, the solar system the various uh, planets and the stars. Uh, these are all created by God. Uh. So, do we have any proof if you ask? Uh, is there anything written document? Or is there any proof? Any video, audio is there? We don't have any proof. Uh. These are things which are can't be seen. But yet we believe that there is a God. Uh. So, this is faith. Uh. Therefore, in verse 3, it says the uh, same thing that the uh, things which are uh, invisible was created by a God. Uh. So, this is the faith. So, if you come to this faith, there are three types of faith. Okay. The first one is called as a day-to-day -day faith. Day-to-day uh, -day faith means uh, uh, the faith in day-to-day -day activities that God will bless our all our day-to-day -day activities. So, day-by-day, -day, each and everything, God will bless us, you see. And uh, whatever work we do, in that one, glass, God's blessings will be there. That is day-to-day -day faith. We might see in the world so many people doing small, small petty businesses. You see, they'll be selling groundnuts on the roadside. Some might wonder, in this uh, financial crisis, where all the expenses are so high, how can a man sustain his life just by selling these few groundnuts? But Ed, that is his faith. That he has faith that God will definitely bless him the little things which he does. So that is his faith. So similarly, the second type of faith is called as a saving faith. Saving faith means what? The ones if we die, that uh, God will take us to heaven. This faith, everybody has have. Everybody, you take any religion, any person you believe, he believes that uh, he will go to heaven as he dies. You ask any religion, any, any wicked person will tell, oh, I'll go to heaven. Everybody goes to heaven and who will go to hell? That's a big question. 
Anyway, this is the saving faith. Even if you ask a roadside beggar, he'll tell, oh, tomorrow if I will go definitely to heaven. I'll be with my God. So, whoever God he believes, you see. And the third faith is the doctrinal faith, which is very, very important. So, this doctrinal faith varies. You see, therefore, uh, today among Christianity, there are 750 denominations, more than that one. Catholic, Protestants, uh, you see Lutheran, uh, uh, Jehovah, Witness, only Jesus, uh, Trinitarians, uh, Pentecost, uh, Episcopal, Evangelical, uh, you see, uh, the Calvinist, uh, uh, the Lutheranist. Uh, so, so many uh, Presbyterians, so many denominations are there, dear brethren. So, among uh, uh, all these denominations, everybody has their faith, uh, you see, and uh, uh, each and every believes on an, uh, you see, uh, theory. Like, for example, the Roman Catholic believes mainly on the putting on the incense uh, offerings and prayer, you see, and confessing all their sins to the Father. You see, that is their faith. So, what does the Bible say? The Bible says, uh, you see, uh, the faith on the Bible is important. So, which is the truth? So, among the, all this faith, which faith is truth? You see, correct, no? There are so many denominations. So, which one do we need to believe? So, what do we need to follow? What does the Bible say? You see? So, let us read John 17, 7. Let us know which is the truth. Read, brother. John 17, 17, brother. Please. Anybody can read? Peter, brother. Santosh, brother. Peter, brother. Santosh Brother, Santosh Pariyar Brother, you are there? Can you read? Okay, Peter Brother, can you read? Okay, John 17, 17. 17, 17. Hmm. Sen sanctify them through the, uh, through the truth. The word is very good. Thy word is truth. So, which is the truth? If you ask, God's words is the truth. So, whatever we believe, it should be as per the Bible. It should be in the Bible. If it is not there in the Bible, it is not at all necessary that we should believe. This is our touchstone. If you go to a pawnbroker and lend our gold, he won't give us uh, the amount just like that, uh, but he will cross check us. Uh, he will really check uh, if uh, that gold is a true one or not. Uh, so he will uh, rub it uh, to the trust on and check. Similarly, whatever somebody tells, we need to check it from the scripture whether it is as per the Bible or not. Uh, therefore, this uh, Bible is the truth. Now, how did this truth uh, come to us? Uh, yeah, what did Jesus say? Jesus said, huh, you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. John 8.32. So knowing the truth is very, very important to be clear of all our doubts. Now how did this truth, God's word, how did it come to us? The Bible says, God used 40 different authors over a period of nearly 44,000 years to write this Bible. And how did God write it? Huh? How, what was the medium that he, God used? How did he God uh, reach out to the people? Let us read Hebrews 1st chapter 1 and 2. Peter, please read it. Uh. Hebrew 1st chapter 1 and 2. Hebrews 1st chapter 1 and 2. 1st chapter. Okay, 1st 1 and 2. God, who at sundry times and in diverse manners spoke in time past unto the fathers by the prophets, has in these last days spoken unto us by his Son, whom he had uh, appointed high of all things, by Very whom good, also he made the word. Very good, brother. So, God, who at different times and in different ways, spoken to our fathers and the prophets. So, how did God speak? He did not speak in a particular way. 
there were different different ways uh, god spoke through dreams god spoke through visions god spoke through the angels god spoke through the tabernacle even god spoke through different situations and what does the verse say at the last god has spoken through his son jesus so this truth has been come to us through various prophets and at last you see uh, through his son jesus it was given to us how did jesus give directly to us no jesus tells in john 117 that the law was given by moses but the grace and truth came by jesus Christ. that means the truth came out through jesus what does it mean does it mean that before jesus there was no truth there was truth but it was hidden it was sealed but jesus came and opened and revealed everything in the bible to his disciples read daniel 12 8 and 9 brother daniel 12 8 and 9 peter brother daniel 12 8 and 9 santosh brother if you also want to read you can please let us know whenever you want you can read Okay. 12 8 and 9 okay ah. and i heard but i understood not then said i oh my lord what shall be the end of these things and he said go the way daniel for the uh, words are close off and seal till the time of the end See? then i did not understood uh, any of the things uh, what he said i said what are the end of these things what is the meaning of this one what did god say did god give him a reply he said go thy way daniel the book is sealed to the time of end so bible is a sealed book therefore when jesus spoke he said to his disciples ah uh, unto you it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven you see matthew 13 10 Jesus said, "It is given unto you to know the mysteries of heaven." So Jesus revealed all the secrets, all the mysteries uh, to the entire disciples. Read, brother. Matthew thirteen eleven, brother. Ah. Huh? Matthew thirteen eleven. Hmm. Okay. Eleven. Hmm. He answered and said. on to them because it is given unto you to know the mysteries of the kingdom of heaven but to mm. them not See? given it is given unto you to know the mysteries secrets of the kingdom of heaven this secrets only jesus came and open it to everybody with that aha uh-huh. now how did god uh, give uh, this uh, secrets jesus you see first uh, reveal this secret to everybody no what did the verse say unto you it is given so you means what it is the disciples mainly the 12 apostles the 12 apostles were taught intricately each and every in depth the truth of the bible the secret things of the bible ha huh? therefore you know ha huh? what authority god had given to the apostles he said whatever you bind on earth it is like binding in heaven Read, brother. Matthew eighteen, eighteen, brother. Please, Matthew eighteen, eighteen, brother. Matthew eighteen, eighteen. Mm. Yeah. Barely I say unto you, what, what's, whatsoever, eh, shall bind on earth, shall be bound in heaven. and whatsoever shall lose on earth shall be lost in heaven very good so whatever you bind on earth shall be bound in heaven whatever you lose on earth shall be lost in heaven now what is this binding and losing is it binding the property or binding the devil huh? that means if binding is happened here then it is bind there also then why did revelation 20 One and two, it says that Jesus will return after a thousand years and bind Satan. If already Satan is bound, why should he bind again? This binding here is not speaking about a literal binding of some physical things. 
this is speaking about the doctrine therefore you see verse 19 it says what does it say brother verse 19 ha huh. verse 19 hmm. again i say unto you that if two of you shall agree on the earth as touching anything huh. that they touching anything are. if you both agree on something touching anything hmm. It shall be done for them of my Father which is in heaven. Ah, this is speaking not about any physical and material things. This is speaking of something which both the brethren agree on doctrine. If you read from verse 15, he clearly says it speaks about the debate or any discipline that has to be in there in the church. You see, if there is any controversy, if there is any differences, how it has to be organized, how it has to be sorted out. Therefore, this binding means the discipline, the, the decorum that has to be in the church. So, like for example, I will let us see the example of binding and losing now. Okay. Now, see, binding means putting some restrictions or, uh, you see, discipline or rules in the church. And uh, losing means what? Liberty is in Christ, isn't it? Now, like for example, now can a woman preach? Is a, can a woman preach in a church? What do you say? What do you say, Peter brother? Can a woman preach in a church? I think yes. Okay, you think yes. Okay, uh, Santosh brother or any brother, Vishnu brother, would you like to answer? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes. Good. Santosh brother, what's your opinion? Okay. Now let us see what does the Bible say. Okay. First Corinthians 14 chapter 34 to 37 brother. Read brother. First Corinthians 14 chapter 34 to 37 brother. Chapter 4. 14. One four. Okay, on one four. Hmm. Verse. Thirty-four to thirty-seven. First Corinthians. Fourteen. Okay, sorry. Hmm. First Corinthians. Fourteen. Thirty-four to thirty-seven. Okay. Let your women keep silence in the churches, for it is not permitted unto them to speak. But they are commanded to be under obedience, as also said the law. Aha. Uh -huh. See? What does the Bible say? Bible says, let your women keep silence. Where? In the churches. They are not permitted to speak. And uh, this is not a, some new commandment which Apostle Paul gave. It says, you see, as they are commanded to be under obedience, this is what the law says. That means even in the Old Testament, uh, you see, it is uh, told that a woman is not permitted to teach, you see, or preach uh, in the churches. Uh, you see, now, uh, here it says you should not speak. Uh, somebody uh, will misunderstand this one. Brother, not speak means what? That means she should keep quiet. Huh? Not even do anything. Huh? Now, that one, Apostle Paul clearly clarifies again in First Timothy, brother. Read Timothy, brother. First Timothy, uh, second chapter, brother. First Timothy, second chapter, 11 and 12, brother. First Timothy. Second chapter, 11 and 12. Second chapter, 11 and 12. Hmm. Let the women learn in silence with all subjection. But I suffer not a woman to teach, not to usurp authority over the men, but to be in silence. Ah, silence means what? Not that she should not speak at all. But she is not allowed to teach. She is not allowed to preach the word of God in the church. And she is not allowed to usurp authority. That means exercise authority 
over the man in the church. So, this is the discipline. This is the, you see, tying of something in the earth. Whatever you tie, it's like God tied in heaven. Therefore, Apostle Paul did not bring any some new thing. This is what the Bible actually said. You see, even in the Old Testament, it was the same thing. Therefore, if you say in the Old Testament, we don't see uh, anywhere in the Old Testament uh, that uh, any woman is uh, preaching the God's word. Neither was she given any opportunity to work in the tabernacle. All were men. You see, none of the women were allowed. And moreover, among the apostles, how many women were there? When Jesus chose uh, 70 disciples, how many women were there? Okay? So therefore, you see, yet uh, the sisters can Witness the word of God. You see, there were so many women whom Jesus healed and did miracles. They witnessed about the Jesus Christ to other people. And they came to accept Jesus. So, witnessing is different. You see, huh? she can pray. She has to cover her head and pray. That's what Apostle Paul says. You see, huh? she can teach uh, her children how to grow in, in the truth. All those things uh, she can do. But uh, she is not allowed to preach uh, or lead the church. That's what the Bible says. Now, read, brother. Read 1 Corinthians 14, chapter, uh, verse 35. 35, 36, 37. 1 Corinthians 14, Okay, and if they will learn anything, let them ask their husbands at home. For it is the uh, same for women to speak in the church. See, it is what? Shame or fame? Shame. Shame, not fame. Shame, shame. <laughs> you see? But uh, uh, today, how many churches follow it? The Bible clearly says that this is a shame. You should not do in the church. Uh, some people will claim, no brother, oh, God has told us. Uh, God spoke to me. God has given the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit spoke to me. Uh, the same Holy Spirit has spoken to Apostle Paul. No? Uh, if somebody tells that one, what does Apostle Paul say? Apostle Paul debates, if any man is spiritual, if any man claims himself to be the prophet of God, that is anointed of the Holy Spirit, let him first follow this basic and very, very simple and a very minute important doctrine in Christ. This is the basic discipline which has to be there in the entire church. Continue with that. Huh? What what came? Excuse me. Hmm. Sorry. Just a moment. Correct, brother. Verse 30 is correct. From where reading is correct. Read. Okay. 36. Hmm. What came the word of God out from you? Or came it unto you only? Hmm, came it unto you only. Yeah. Separately did it come to you? Did it not come to us? Did it not come to apostles and all? Did completely God come and speak separately and uh, something special to you and something special to us? Uh? Why the difference? Uh? No difference. Uh? Continue. Huh? If any man think themselves to be perfect or, or spiritual, let him acknowledge that the things that I write unto you are the commandments of the Lord. Ah, what I am writing is not, not my own theory. What I bound on earth, it is like God bounding on heaven. So this is the commandments of the Lord. This is not the commandments of Apostle Paul. This is the commandment of, you see, the Lord. Ah, therefore, ah, God is not a God of confusion. Read with the verse 33. Ah. 38? 33. Okay, 33. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all sources of the science. See, God is not the author of uh, confusion. No, 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 no. But as God is a God of peace, it is in all the church. Uh, none of the churches in the Old Testament, uh, you see, had a woman preaching. They were women servants. 
they were helping uh, so many brethren that is different uh, than the preaching dear brethren so this differentiation has to be clearly marked out now why did god uh, tell women not to preach because satan first deceived eve in the garden of eden that's what uh, first timothy second chapter verse 12 13 14 it says a woman was deceived not adam was not deceived so woman is a clear tool and an easy tool of the devil to deceive her therefore god told not uh, you see huh? not to use a woman to speak in the church okay now does it mean that uh, woman can't go to the heavenly salvation can't she go and rule with the lord she can not that she should only preach and go you see, preaching itself is not important. Uh, preaching is the very last thing. Uh, but uh, how then she will be saved? Uh, she can be saved. Uh, there is no differentiation regarding that one. You see, neither male nor female, no Hebrew or Greek. Uh, read Galatians 3.28, brother. Galatians 3.28, regarding heavenly there salvation, there is no differentiation. Read, brother. Huh? There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither born nor free. There is neither male uh, nor fe uh, female. E uh, for a are all on in Christ Jesus. All are one in regarding what? Uh, not preaching. Uh, regarding heavenly salvation. You see? Uh, regarding heavenly salvation, everybody are the uh, same. Not that you should preach only and then go to heaven. Read First Timothy 2nd chapter. Verse 14 and 15, brother. Second Timothy. Second Timothy. Chapter. Second chapter. First Timothy, brother. Second chapter. 14 and 15, brother. Okay, sorry. First Timothy. Second. Fourteen and fifteen. Mm. And Adam was not deceived, but the woman being deceived was in the transgression. Mm. Mm. Not, not withstanding, she shall be saved in childbearing if they continue in faith and charity and the holiness with severity. You see how she shall be saved. Not withstanding, she shall be saved with the preaching, a lot of work activities. No, with childbearing, if they continue in faith, love, holiness, sobriety, this is the main importance for a woman to make a calling and action. So, this is the example of binding. See, let us see another example of binding. Now, can we call somebody as father? Is it right to call somebody as father or not? Okay, let us see the scriptures. Matthew 23, 9, brother. Read Matthew 23, 9, brother. And call no man your father upon the earth. For one is your father which is in heaven. See? Call no man as your father. Now if you go and call somebody as father, 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 oh, holy father, oh, father, please help father. Huh? Can we speak? Huh? Can we call somebody a father? Huh? What did Jesus say? Basic thing clearly said, call no man as your father except your, you see, huh? earthly father. Now, who is your father? A father which is in heaven. Then who are we? No, all the people, who are they? What does the Bible say? Verse 8, brother. Huh? But be not a call Robbie, for one is your master. Even Christ and all are brethren. Are brethren. brethren. See, that brethren. is the only name that is given. Brother, sister. That's all. No father, no nothing. Though you might be very great uh, or very, you see, senior. Everybody are equal in Christ, dear brethren. So, this is an example of binding. Now, uh, like one more example. Reverend. Now, can we call somebody as reverend? So many people keep uh, this title, no? Reverend, uh, uh, Holy Father, so and so. Reverend, uh, so and so is coming today for our prayer. Yeah? Now, can we call somebody as Reverend or not? Yes or no? 
Mm. So let us read. Actually, no. Actually, no. Correct, brother. So let us see what does the Bible say. Who is called as reverend in the Bible? Psalms 111, verse 9. Psalms 111, verse 9. 111? 9. Verse 9. He sent redemption unto his people. He had commanded his covenant forever holy and uh, reverend is his name. Ah, holy and reverend is whose name? His name means what? Uh, father's name. Uh. <laughs> God's name. You see, God has sent the redemption to his people. He has commanded his covenant. Holy. Are we holy? Huh? We are holy. Unholy holy. God is his holy dear brother. Just imagine... Fallen human being, not even perfect human being. Can we ever think to be equal to God? Man was created a little lower than the angels. Now we have come to such a low extent. Fallen, you see, in stage. Then lot of difference between us two angels. Then can we ever imagine to keep the title which God himself is having? That is not at all correct. Now you see, in today, so many people use the titles as prefix. Reverend or so and so. Reverend Paul, Reverend John, Father uh, Daniel, you see, all these things they put the title. Pastor, uh, huh? you see, huh? Peter, all these titles they put now. Now is it correct to put a title uh, next to our name? Actually, that is called as a prefix. Generally, they don't use prefix only for some certain people. You, see, you can see the list there. The doctors and the captain general, they're all major there. You, see, you can see the list. Now, why this prefix is allowed for them to keep it? Because when you book a train ticket or a plane ticket, there is a waiting list. And if there is any doctor or a police or an army person who is in the waiting list, if the prefix is mentioned, it is easy to identify. And when confirming the waiting list, they would definitely give preference to these people. Why? Such a huge plane or a train, any tragedy may happen at any time. But if a doctor is there, if a military person is there, he will save a lot of life. Just because to identify them, they gave this uh, prefix. But today, it is misused in such a way that everybody keep it to the name. That is not what the Bible says. Now, another example of binding is Pope. Pope means what? In Latin, it is Papa. Papa means what again? Father, Papa. Huh? Papa. Now, is it correct to call everybody uh, one person as a father. No, that's what clearly Jesus said. No, call no man as your father. Now, this is again violating God's commandment. The Pope claims that he is the, you see, uh, first, uh, uh, Peter is the first Pope and uh, Jesus gave him the keys of hell and heaven. You see, let us read uh, Matthew 16, uh, Matthew 16 chapter, brother. 16 chapter, um, Matthew 16 chapter, brother. Verse 18 and 19, brother. Huh. And I say also unto thee that thou art Peter, and upon his rock I will build my church, and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. And I will give unto thee the keys of the kingdom of heaven, and uh, what uh, whatsoever the shall be bind on earth shall be bound in the heaven and the whatever uh, shall lose in the earth shall be lost in heaven. See, the same power was given to him. Here it says, the kingdom of uh, heaven, the keys of the kingdom of heaven is given to me. Now what is this kingdom of heaven keys that was given to Peter? Peter was not the first pope, neither was the church built upon him. Actually, what was the original name of Peter? Peter's original name was Simon. We can see in verse 17, it says, uh, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona. That was his original name. He said, you are Peter. Why? Because Peter gave a solid statement that Jesus is the son of God. The entire church structure in the whole world is standing upon that doctrine that Jesus is the son of God. And upon this doctrine only, the whole churches of this world are built. 
and peter was given the authority of a uh, uh, kingdom of heaven the keys now what is this keys key is actually to open something which is locked and which is the key that peter used if you see there were two doors that were locked one to the jews during the day of pentecost when the holy spirit was poured upon only the jewish people what happened 3000 people jewish people got converted did how many people did jesus convert not 3000 but when peter preached what happened 3000 people got converted that was the first key peter used to preach then the second key was the same key was again used to unlock the door of opportunity for the gentiles the first gentile convert was cornelius 3 and 1/2 years later he came to the truth the same way god holy spirit was again poured upon the gentiles these are the two keys actually uh, was given to uh, apostle peter okay now whatever we have seen is the example of binding discipline you see and strict rules uh, the decorum we need to maintain in the church okay now let us see the examples of uh, letting loose that is liberties in christ see in christ there is not only restrictions but there is also liberty like for example uh, can we marry or not is marriage correct as per the bible or uh, we should not marry at all tell me that can we marry or should we marry jo peter brother tell me should we marry or not vishnu brother santosh brother tell me should we marry or not is it correct to marry or not i think yes yes okay you think yes vishnu brother what's your opinion yes brother yes good so bible says in hebrews 13:4 that marriage is honorable in all it is it is yes. to be respected see in garden of eden yeah. god only created yeah. first marriage now can you forbid somebody to marry forbid somebody to marry. so marriage sure. is honorable it is good but we should not commit a fornication and adultery okay now okay we can marry good but what about a bishop can a bishop marry or not now you tell me peter brother tell me can bishop marry or not peter brother yes 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 sir good bishop brother can bishop marry yes. or not yes sir. yes he can good he can marry good okay let us read first timothy 32 read first timothy 32 brother a bishop then must be blameless the husband of one wife ha huh? husband of one wife one wife that means he can marry but he should be having only one wife but today do the bishops marry eh the bishops don't marry at all marriage is forbidden for the bishops now you tell me is this doctrine correct or wrong okay let us see what the bible says okay so let us see everything from the bible only see our faith is what on the bible that's what we are seeing today most holy faith most holy faith on the bible okay read First Timothy, fourth chapter, verse one, two, and three. Now the Spirit speaks mm. expressly that in the later times some mm. shall depart from the faith, giving heed to the su- uh, succeeding seducing spirit. What seducing, seducing. deceiving spirit? Deceiving spirit. and doctrines of uh, devil see doctrines of devil brother that means the devil should speak doctrines ah now what is the doctrine of the devil continue brother ah speaking lies in hypocrisy having their uh, conscience sheer sheer with a uh, hot iron forbidding to marry what brother forbidding forbidding to marry ah first uh, doctrine of the devil is what uh, forbidding to marry you should not marry none of the pope none of the bishop none of the archbishops are married 
This is the doctrine of what? Is God. This is Holy Spirit. This is the doctrine of the devil. Next brother, continue. Huh? And commanding to abstain from meats which God had created to receive them, thanksgiving of them which believe and know the truth. See, abstain from meat. You should not eat meat. When the Christians don't eat meat? When the Christians are forbidden to eat meat, which day? Oh, you don't know. You see? You don't, you don't know. Ah, Friday. Friday they don't eat. On the Lent period, no, 40 days. Huh? Before Good Friday, they won't eat at all. Why? On the Good Friday, they won't eat. Why? Because, oh, Jesus died on the cross. Okay. Huh? Where does the Bible say? Jesus, Jesus, Jesus said that you should not eat meat. Huh? This is all the doctrines of the devil. Brain. So, this is... Huh? The wicked entering the church. If the devil has to speak, where should he come and speak? Can he speak in temple or the Christians will listen? No, he should come inside the church and speak. Now, can the devil come inside the church, brother? Can devil come inside the church and speak? Yes or no? Peter, brother, tell me. Devil can... Come and speak in the church. Yes or no? Devil can. He can. I think yes. Can. He can. Okay, read. Revelation 2, 13. Revelation 2, 12 and 13. Hmm. 2, 13. 2, 12 and 13. Read both the verses. Brother. Okay. And the angel of the church in... For Gamos write these things, said he, which had the sharp sword with two uh, edges. I know the works and where the devilish even where Satan's seat is. Uh -huh. and where? Satan's seat is. See, inside the Pergamos, uh, Satan was what? Putta. He is put the seat permanently sat inside the church means that is where the Satan doctrine began to be preached uh, through human beings. Uh, devil doesn't come directly and preach. Uh, uh, we will see all these things in a detail in a coming future class. Uh. Therefore, God knew everything. That uh, if I don't give everything, the God's word in Bible in writing, Satan would corrupt uh, the entire Christianity. Therefore, he gave everything in writing. The other. You see, Jesus knew as the words keep on passing one by one, what will happen? The corruption will come in the church. Therefore, everything was written. And Jesus knew that the coming days, what will happen? These false doctrines will come inside the church. Hence, he spoke two parables warning us. Let us speak, I mean, let us study those two parables. First parable is the parable of the mustard seed in Matthew 13 chapter 31 and 32, brother. Please. Matthew 13 chapter chapter 13 okay oh. 32 ah, 13 chapter 31 and 32 31 and 32 hmm. another parable put he forth unto them saying the kingdom of heaven is like to a grain of mustard seed which a man took and sword in his field, which in, indeed is the least of all seed, but when it is grown, it is the greatest among herb and a tree, so that the birds of the year come and logs in the branches of branches thereof. Very good, brother. See here, Jesus spoke a parable. Uh, the kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed which a man took and sowed in his field which is least of all the seeds when it began to grow it began to grow the greatest among the herbs and became a tree. Now you tell me huh? here we all know very well huh? these things and all. You see huh? uh, the son of man the one who sowed the seed is the son of man Jesus told other parable no? the man who sowed the seed is the son of man the seed is what? You see, the mustard seed, it is faith. 
how much uh, faith we should have. What did Jesus say? If you have a faith small as the mustard seed, that is sufficient. That is sufficient. You see, that is the faith of a Christianity. When it was sown, it was sown in a very small, uh, you see, manner. Uh, you see, so that faith of Christianity, Jesus sowed on this earth. Now, how was it? It was very small. The Bible says it began to grow as a herb and became a very big tree. Birds of the air came and introduced himself. Now tell me, does a mustard seed grow to be a plant or a tree? Who will answer? Let me see. Mustard seed, is it a plant, plant or is it a tree? Plant. Very good, brother. So it's not a tree. So Jesus is actually telling it's an abnormal growth. The purpose of sowing Christianity on this earth was to gather a little flock, a faithful Christians. But today it has become a very huge, great denomination. You know, the highest collection where it happens in the whole world, it happens in Vatican City. Even till today, daily the highest collection contributions in the whole world is Vatican City. Dear Budren, what happened? The Christianity began to be so big that uh, the birds of the air came and nested there. What is the meaning of birds in the Bible? You see, we have studied the first class. How to study the Bible? For the Bible, Bible is the one dictionary. If you want to understand anything from the Bible, take out all the quotes, all the means only from the Bible, not from Google. No, 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 only from the Bible. Let us read Matthew 13. Matthew 13, 19. Matthew 13, chapter 19th verse, brother. When any one hear the word of the kingdom and understand it not, then come the weak one and cast away that which was sown in his heart. This is he, this is he which received seed by the way of. Wayside. Very good. Uh, see, here the birds are compared to the Satan, which came and took the seed which was sown on the wayside. So, Satan came and nested in the branches, means in all the churches. You see what happened? Uh, Satan has come and nested. Only few faithful Christians are there, dear brethren. There are uh, faithful church also, faithful Christians are there. But among the majority, false doctrines has come and nested inside the church. Uh, that is what he says, the birds of the air and came in instead. So what has happened? The church got corrupted. Read Revelation 18 to Buddha. Revelation 18 to? Mm. And he cried mightily with a strong voice, saying, Babylon, the great is fallen. Fallen is fallen and is became the ha habitation of devils and the whole of every soul every four spirit and a craze of every unclean and hateful bird see every foul spirit not holy spirit uh, cage of every unclean and a hateful bird uh, all wrong doctrines came inside the chest here uh, and uh, let us read second parable matthew 13 33 brother uh, Another travel speak he unto them, the kingdom of heaven is like up, upon leaven, unto leaven, leaven, which a woman took and hide, uh, hid in, in their three measures of meal, till the whole, whole was leaven. Aha, uh -huh. you see, the kingdom of heaven is like unto a what? Leaven. You see, living means what? Uh, uh, a woman took it and measured it in three pieces of field. Uh, Flour, it seems, until the entire uh, meal was corrupted. Your so, living actually in the Bible means false doctrine. Read Matthew 16 11, brother. Jesus said that one. Matthew 16 11. Matthew 16 11. How is it that I do not understand that I speak? Into it not to you concerning beard, 
that it should be aware of the living of the Pharisees and of the Sadducees. Mm -hmm. Beware of the living of the Pharisees and Sadducees. What a good doctrine. Huh? Impure and bad doctrines. Jesus warned to be careful about the false doctrine. So, here a woman took and hid it in three measures of floor means what, you know? A small false doctrine was hid in the three important doctrines of the Bible. See, Christianity has important three doctrines. Now, which is that one? First Corinthians 13, 13, read with us. It's given there. First Corinthians 13, 13. First Corinthians 13, 13, okay. And now, faith, hope, charity, these three, but the greatest of this is charity. Hmm. See, now about love, hope and faith. Now, what happened to the love? Supreme love on God. You see, love thy heart, Lord, with all the heart, with all the mind, with all the soul. What happened today? Nobody loves God, first of all. They love God only for benefit. You oh, will go to church. Why? Because God will bless us. Or else what will happen? God will curse us. God will punish us. People give offerings. Why? If you don't give to tithes, what will happen? God will punish us. He will cut off our all income. Everybody go to churches. Only why? Because of fear. Where is the love of God? Majority people have eh, left the love of God. The first love is not there at all. Read Isaiah 29, 13, brother. Isaiah 29, 13, brother. 29, 13. Hmm. Isaiah 29, 13. 30 or 13? 1, 3. 2, 9. Okay. Verse okay, 1, 3. Okay. Wherefore the Lord said, for as much as these people draw near me with their mouth and with their lips, do honor me, but have removed their heart for, far from me, and their fear towards me is ta taught by the uh, precepts of men. Mm -hmm. See, they don't love uh, fear, which is taught by the precepts of men. Don't come to church, curses will happen, punish God will. All things. First love went off because of all that. Next hope. What was the hope? If you suffer with Christ now, tomorrow you're going to reign with Christ. Second Timothy 2.12. 2 Timothy 3.12. This went off. Where there is no hope in Christianity. What is there? If you if you believe in Jesus, he will bless you now also. He will love you now also. You can rejoice. You can enjoy your life. Luxury life. He will bless you with all the riches. Tomorrow also he will bless you. When? Go take you to heaven. Where is the hope that you should suffer for Christ? What did Jesus say? If any man wants to be my disciple, let him deny himself, carry the cross and follow me. Where is that one denying? Hope went on. The last one is faith. Faith on the Bible. Now the Christian's faith on the Bible is totally gone. They don't believe in the Bible. They believe only in the teachings of men. They don't even check what is there in the Bible. They brethren. All believe false doctrines. So what happened? This uh, truth got corrupted. This is what Jesus warned us. Hence, uh, he gave everything in writing. Therefore, to build ourselves in the most holy faith, the faith on the Bible is very, very important to check each and every scriptures if it's there in the Bible or not. Okay? So thank you. So please go through the notes and the YouTube link. Any doubts, any questions you have, we can discuss. Anybody, any questions, any doubts? Peter Brother, Santosh Brother, Vishnu Brother. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you Anybody, much. any questions, Brother? No question. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Then, Vishnu Brother, can you offer a prayer if you don't mind? Is it possible? Okay. Okay. Thank you. Parmeshwar Babu, I am a prayer for you. 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 वास्ता करने होने हम मिलाए किठाउने होने हम मिलाए हमरा पिता हमी तो पला धन्ने बा दिन चाऊ प्रभु संसार मा हमरा लगी पिता ना भाई पनी प्रभु तो पे हमरा पिता होने उनसा स्वर्ग मा पृथ्वी मा हमी सब ये तो पे लाई पिता को आदर त्यों स्थान मा 
तपाईलाई महिमा दिन सकेका हौ धन्यवाद छ ब्रदर राजु सरलाई तपाईले सहायता गर्नुहोस् उहाँले हामीलाई जुन प्रकारले सिकाउँदै हुनुहुन्छ प्रभु हामी हृदयबाट सिक्न सकेका हौँ भित्र अन्तस्करणबाट सिक्न सकेका हौँ सिक्ने चाहना अझै दिनुहोस् महिमा लिनुहोस् हाम्रो यो टिमलाई आशीर्वाद दिनुहोस् येसु प्रभुको नाममा आमेन आमेन आमेन